right your question about this formation and awesome. Coach, when you're going against a team that has a offensive coordinator that's known for putting up points and, and, and scoring quickly. How does that impact your preparation during the week? No. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm going against their defense, not their offense. So, no, I mean, we're just trying to attack the best way we can. Coach, I know you talked about during camp there were some players that you knew or thought were going to stand out during the game and kept throughout the season. Were there any players uh, this weekend that stood out in particular uh, that you know you were pleasantly surprised with? with how I mean, our running back room looked pretty good to me. You know, there's a lot of depth in that room, which I think everybody can see what you know competition brings. Those guys are fighting for reps, which when they run the ball, it shows. Um, we had some receivers make plays. We struck been solid, right? Um, he was solid in that game. I mean, it was it was one of those games where. You know, they were playing coverage, you know, kind of begging us to run the ball a little bit. I guess they didn't think we could pound them. But, um, and so obviously that was working, so we were going to stick with that until they brought more people down, which they really never did. So, uh, but those guys, I mean, Colby made a good play first drive, I and mean, that, that, that was a good play by him. I thought, um, you know, George did some good things. I mean, we, we had guys – all around that did some good things. It wasn't just a one of those nights where you were throwing it all around. Uh, it was not a lot of plays to be made because we were having success in other things, and that's just the way life goes sometimes. But I thought they played hard and they moved around fast. Would you point that as like a kind of pound the rock? Uh, Mark Fletcher is making his, his college debut. Obviously, it's one thing to kind of see him do that on the practice field, but to see him be able to kind of run through and run past uh, other college players, like what did you, what impressed you about him when he played for you? Yeah, he's different. I mean, he's he's hard to tackle. I mean, he's he's built for um, for that position. You know, he can take some abuse, and he's hard to tackle. You know, and when he gets out in the open field, in the open field, he can he can he can he can run the distance. And so, um, he's a special player. We're glad to have him. What do you think I thought he played well. I mean, I thought Cam. I mean, a lot of the stuff that Cam did isn't going to show up in the stat line, but. He was, I mean, Cam's an extremely smart player. He very rarely messes up an assignment. I mean, he knows what's going on. And so, he played a lot of football. He's been around football for a long time. And so, I thought he was one of the guys that played really, really well. You wouldn't be able to look at the stat line and tell that, but when you watch the games like we do, I mean, he was he was one of the bigger reasons we ran the ball like we did. Yeah, just what you did. I mean, he, you know, he's been showing that in camp. You know, he's been competing. He looks really good. He's moving around well. He's taking advantage of his reps. You know, and, and he needed to do what he did on uh, Friday. And so I thought that he, you know, like I said at the beginning, I mean, that room's got some, got some stacked talent in it. Uh, so it's everybody's fighting for for reps and reps in games. But he's doing what he needs to do. bodies and they're they're bigger they're longer they're faster and so everything's gonna you know the sense of urgency at every position needs to improve and has to improve and so I mean that naturally happens through the course of, of preparation you know kids know you know they watch them You know, I mean, when I did, I mean, I got a little impatient one time and I got picked, you know, so I mean, you know, I mean, it was one of those deals where I'm always, I'm always eager and I'm always looking to take shots, you know, that's, that's part of my DNA, uh, but I've learned over 20 something years of coaching too that, you know, the win means more important than anything else. And so ultimately we're having success um, and the way we're built, honestly, I mean, people are going to have to stop the run, you know. We're, we're good up front. We're physical. You know, those guys took it pretty personal that everybody was talking about how physical the other team was, right? And so it's pretty evident from the first play, really, 
that our guys were pushing them around. And so, you know, I watched that too. And the ebb and flows of games are going to change what you want to do. Now, were there other shots that could have been taken? They were. I mean, and it's not like we didn't have, like, post routes called at times. But, I mean, the quarterback isn't going to throw them when they're not there. And so, a lot of times, you have those things called through the course of games multiple times, 10, 12 times. And then the ball goes to the flats because they're just they're playing soft cover. So a lot of times that's not very indicative of the play that's called of where the ball goes. A lot of times that has a lot to do with the coverage that's called. But ultimately, through the course of the game and how the game was going, you know, I mean, it was it would have been dumb for me not to lean on those guys, you know, because it was working. Were you able to kind of pull back some of the offensive plays over the first week, or anything that you're planning on maybe? Yeah, I mean, we didn't do a lot of things that were even on the sheet last week. Um, and, and ultimately, that was because of, you know, when we, when we got out there, I mean, we were we started the game in, in 10 personnel, two by two, and they played it completely different than they've shown they played it. And so that told me something from the beginning that, you know, that they were going to play coverage all day. And so, you know, obviously a lot of the stuff that I had planned, I just didn't need to go to at that time. You know, there were certain things that I, you know, that I circled right off the bat that I was like, all right, this is the way this game's gonna go. And at halftime, really, we, we, we pinpointed the five or six things that we wanted to do the second half. And I think we, I mean, we, I scored on every possession or maybe we didn't score on one, but, you know, we didn't do a whole lot through the course of the game. The extra offensive line, is that something you've done previously or? Yeah, I mean, throughout the years you've done it uh, just based on the people available, you know. I mean, you want to get in certain sets based on stuff that they do in short yardage and stuff that they do in third down. And if you don't have those people available, then, you, you know, you do other things. And so, but, um, but that's part of game planning and just figuring out what package you want to use in certain situations. And I do think those guys bring an element of point of attack, you know, when you have those – big guys up there uh, at point of attack, I think it, it moves people. How did you assess the quarterback play from obviously Van Dyke playing most of the game, but also Emory Williams getting his first collegiate action? I thought Tyler was very efficient. You know, I thought he made a few mistakes. Uh, the pick obviously, you know, was, I mean, to be quite honest with you, that's as much my fault as it is his. I mean, I got, I got a little greedy on that drive because I was, you know, you know itching to, to throw the ball for to go in. And I called that a little bit premature. And so he was probably antsy too. And so that that's more my fault than it is his. And so, but through the course of the game, you know, the, some of the things you don't see with quarterback play is, is there's certain plays that are called that he gets us out of the call because there's certain fronts they're playing. And, you know, when they, when they play coverage, I mean, he, he'll check run at times when there's a pass play check and stuff like that. So he, he did a great job of, of getting us into the right play. And, and I'll say this too, I mean, because he was probably as eager as I was, but, you know, I mean, it probably hurt him at times to, to check out of those and hand the ball off again, you know. But ultimately, that's what, that's what the numbers told you to do. And so, and I thought that was very good for him to, to sit there and be patient and learn that, look, man, I mean, it ain't all about, you know, throwing the ball 60 times a game, you know, and I mean, it's about getting the win. And, you know, I don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly the, it was what, 17 of 23 or 18 of 23. So, and, and one of them was a throw away at the end of the half. I thought that play, honestly, the drive at the end of the half, the drive at the end of the half and the drive to start the third quarter, to me, was where he kind of settled in and, you know, that drive, I and mean, we had a holding penalty that took away like a 40-yard gain by uh, George. And then we, we pop a run to get down there. And we have, I think, seven seconds left. And he just understood the situation. You know, the play that was called, you know, had multiple options. But he knew that, like, we were going to have that option or out of bounds. And his first option wasn't there. And he threw it out of bounds, which saved us two seconds to kick a field goal. And so I thought that drive – by him was, was exceptional. And then the drive coming out of half was just methodically, you know, he hit a couple quick game plays, we ran the ball down and then hit a big run. And so, you know, 
he was. It's always good to, to score at the end and score at the beginning. You know, that's a that's a pretty good, you know, way to start the second half. But the the last drive of the first half was very efficient by him. Yeah, I mean, you know, trying to think about, you know, the times we didn't score, you know, typically when we didn't score, it was something we did. You know, we jumped off sides a couple times, right? And so, um, you know, cleaning that up is, is the bigger process from week one to week two in our situation. Uh, but you want to score touchdowns. We were four for four in the red zone, but we were 50% touchdown field goals, right? So. You want to be 75 to 80 percent touchdowns in the red zone. So, you know the way I look at games. I mean that was a that was a below the bar, you know, performance red zone wise. Uh, but you know one of the reasons was because we we inflicted some some self hurt down there too, right? We we were we were a little antsy at times and, and jumped off sides and and stuff put us behind the chains, but. But ultimately, we did run the ball physically down there, which is what you have to do when the field gets shorter. You know, it's going to be the same way against a and I mean, you look at the structure of, of their defense, and I mean, you know, they're, I think they were number one in the nation against the pass last year, right? And so, you know, the things get tough when, when bodies are big and they move fast. When you get closer to the goal line, it gets a little tougher. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a tough guy to bring down. I mean he's he's a big physical kid that can run, and so you know that was a that was an elite play by him. But there was I mean there was a couple of hitch routes he caught where it took three people to bring him down. You know, which to me that was those those plays show a little bit more to me because the screen was I mean he hit it, caught it, scored, great. You know that's all fun in games, but but he caught a couple of hitch routes where he probably should have got five, but he got twelve. You know. That's fighting for extra yards, and that's being a tough physical player. So, yeah, very proud of him. You're, you're, uh, you talked about getting greedy a little bit. <laughs> yeah. When that happens every now and then as a coach, how hard do you get on yourself? How fast can you get over that? And then I have a second question. Um, you talked about getting greedy a little bit. Um, how fast can you get over that? And then I have a second I mean, I think now I, I get over things pretty quick, to be honest with you. you know? I was more curious to see how you know we were going to be on the sideline after – a negative play, you know, after adversity. And I thought it was awesome. Like, honestly, I thought that was the best part of the whole game was, you know, I've preached to these guys since I got here of, of picking up teammates, right? I mean, heck, it isn't really about the great plays you make. It's about the bad plays of other people making, what you do to pick those guys up, you know? And so I was very curious when that happened to watch us come off the field and see how the communication was going to be between players. And so you preach something and you get in those situations and you see if you, if anybody's paying attention to you, I guess is what you would say. It was awesome. I mean, everybody went over from O linemen to receivers to everybody. And was everybody was just, was saying the right thing. A very positive interaction. And so that told me something about the group, you know? Look, you're gonna mess up. I didn't call the perfect game. You know, that was obviously a play that I would like to have back if he would too. But it also revealed something to me about the group, which so, was so very Tyler positive. too? You're talking about Tyler also? Yeah. Or are they making him feel better? Well, Tyler too. I mean, I wanted to see how he reacted too, you know. And so I thought overall, everybody on the sideline was just, hey, move on, next play, right? And so I thought that was awesome. And the other thing I want to ask you was Jakari Brown. Would you like to get him maybe into the game? Yeah, I mean, look. They're both, they're both there to play, okay? And ultimately, I have four games to play with both of them. And so I'm going to be very strategic in what I do with both of those guys. And so, you know, people can read into whatever they want to read into, but I got four games. And so. Coach, uh, just going back to the progression of Mark Fletcher, who could still be relatively new to the offense, mentioned the competitiveness of the running back room. At what point during fall game did you realize that he'd be so versatile and capitalizing on the, the way that he Probably the, the first scrimmage, the first live scrimmage we had um, was where he kind of popped, you know, and it was it was obvious that he was going to be a hard guy to talk.
Coach, can you talk about some of the athletes on a ms defense that kind of stand out to you and what challenges they pose? Which one you want to talk about? I mean, all of them are very athletic, you know, I mean, um, I mean, the people they walk out on the field are elite, you know, they're long, they're fast, their D lines athletic, uh, they're big, they're physical linebackers are, are long and rangy. I mean, the Cooper kid is, I think, 6'3", 240. I mean, he runs east to west really well. Uh, the back end guys, the safeties tackle well, you know, they're, they get there with mean intentions. Uh, so, I mean, I could. We can talk about all of them if you want to, but I mean, it's a, it's a, they, they're a talented group. We know what we have facing us, and, and we're going to prepare and be ready for the task. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys.